This is Yvette Nicole Brown, and you're tuned to That Grape Juice. So good morning, That Grape Juice viewers. Today's guest is the true definition of a multi-hyphenate. She is an Emmy-nominated, NAACP-nominated writer, producer, actress, singer, host, and philanthropist. Listen, if we were to sit here and go through all of the projects that she's been attached to, we'll be here all day. Please help me in welcoming the amazing Yvette Nicole Brown. How are you this morning? I am so good. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. So first, I saw on your Instagram, I was, you know, perusing. Yeah. A little bit of a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I do it. <laughs> and I saw, I saw you posted about the big house. Yeah. With yeah. Her. You said that was your first role um, that, you know, was your first sitcom back in 2004, I believe. Yeah. Well, we shot it in 2003 and it came out in 2004. That's how long ago it was. It was Kevin Hart's first uh, sitcom ever. My first sitcom ever. I think I, all I had done before that was two episodes of Girlfriends, which I, you know, thank you for that, Mara right. Brock Akil. But, um, and then I booked this show and I'm working with, with Keith David and Anisha Walker and Faison Love and Kevin Hart before he was Kevin Hart. Um, and he has not changed everybody. He's still as loving and, and kind and funny as he was when I first met him. But yeah, I posted the clip and it was kind of nice to go down memory lane. Absolutely. So with that being said, can you tell us a little bit, what were like the early stages of your career? Like before, because you did a numerous amount of walk on the road, you know, before you did that uh, show. Yeah, I, you know, listen, it was, I, I started in commercials. I, was, I started on in a play, David Talbert's His Woman, His Wife. I toured for eight months on, in that. Came back to LA, got an agent, started um, auditioning for commercials, did that for about a year and a half. And then Girlfriends came and then The Big House came and then it just kind of took off from there. You know, baby steps that, that you don't even realize are actually huge leaps at the time. Um, the blessing of, of starting small, because everyone, there's no such thing as an overnight success. <laughs> like this is, again, Big House was, was 2003. So what, I don't, I can't do the math. It's almost 20 years ago. So um, it, it takes that long to, to, to get your footing and to figure out the city and to, to, to perform in front of enough people where somebody says, get that. You know, it takes a while for that. So I hope that anyone watching that wants to be a performer, that they give themselves the time to find their footing so they can have their have their moment, you know? Absolutely. And speaking of, because like they say, it takes about 10 years or more to become an overnight success. Yes. So let's fast forward to present time. Let's talk about Fairfax, Amazon yeah. Prime video. I watched a few episodes. I love the <laughs> show. Your character, Trini, how did that role come your way? And was it like instantly like a yes? Yes, you know what's funny? I was talking to to Matt, Aaron, and Teddy, our creators, and I we I can't remember if I auditioned or if they offered it to me. But usually, I'll get an audition from my agent, and I I put my little take on who the person is on on a recorder and send it into them, and then you get you get the gig and and you try your best to create a character that's interesting and fun and and unique to that character. Whenever I do voiceover, I try to give each character their own voice. I'm running out of voices because I'm not yeah. a Cree Summer type talent, so I got to work with what I have. Right. But I I end up you know trying to find something that is interesting. Interesting. And I think Trini's interesting in her backstory, which I love, is that she was a background singer for Prince in the Revolution. I just think that's so cool that this cartoon was hanging out with Prince, you know. And on the show, she plays um, the stepmother to Dale, one of our one of our four kids on the show. And um, she's just the voice of reason. But she also lets Dale pal around with his friends and figure out life, which I think is really great. Absolutely. And another thing that's so great about the show is it's Gen Z focus is very yeah. much. It's also an adult cartoon, which it is I, an adult. It, say yeah. that it's for adults. It's not for kids. <laughs> what are some of the topics that are explored in season two? Oh, gosh. You know, first love, even if it may be uh, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. uh, finding your way. Uh, Kiersey's character, Derica, is always um, she's an activist. So she's always she always has a cause that she's fighting for. So that's in there. We get to see what happens with Trini when she when she's hanging with her wine drinking female friends. That's a little fun. So it's basically all the things that middle schoolers go through and young people go through as they're trying to find their way. Uh, um, popularity and and you know dealing with bullies. All of this stuff is there. And then also you know social media and how difficult it is to navigate that when you're young and trying to figure figure yourself out and everybody's telling you you're not cute enough or you don't have enough stuff. You don't have brand names. It's all of that stuff is in there. Absolutely. It's a lot of great topics that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a millennial, um, yeah. but I definitely relate to a lot of things that happen with Gen Z's. And I just yeah. think that it's 
so the topics are just so great and I love it when it's in adult format because when yeah. it's in adult format it's able to be more transparent more realistic right. and answer, right. able to answer the questions properly right speaking of views and hot topic I love whenever you are on the view it is thank just, you you no know, I just love listening to you I love the it's just the cadence in your voice it's the way you approach topics it's you know I people don't like the word moderate but mm -hmm. it always comes from a place of you know you're looking you have a stance but yet you are still able to you know explore both sides but then come to a very sensible you know conclusion and i so with that being said what are some of the hot topics that are you know keeping your attention today you know some i'm always sad about voting rights not being that that law being pulled that bill being pulled um gun rights the fact that we don't have sensible gun laws is ridiculous to me um i'm sad at the 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 insurrection and the fact that more people higher up have not gone to jail for that foolishness. Um, and in regards to being somewhat moderate, I'm definitely a liberal, but um, I, I actually believe that um, kindness is the best way through this. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of kindness, you still got to call a spade a spade. You right. still have to tell the truth. And I'm never afraid to tell the truth. And I always stand by things that I say. I don't delete tweets unless I've said something that is, is mean spirited to the point where it's harmed someone. I apologize and will remove it if they asked me to. But otherwise, I don't delete my tweets because I feel like I said something wrong. If it's true, I stand by it. And I don't care what the fallout is. And I, I even tell my employers, I'm like, listen, this is who I am. So if you have a problem with me throwing elbows on Twitter, I might not be the person for you to hire because I'm never going to be silenced. I'm going to speak the truth. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get into that good trouble like John Lewis talked about always. Let, let's talk about that some more because I just had mm -hmm. this conversation with a few friends this past weekend about mm -hmm. a tweet. I don't know if you were, I'm not going to call any names, but there was a certain up and coming artist in the hip hop scene who many years ago said some, you know. Oh, about Blue people. Ivy? Yes, yes, yes. And I, you know, my friends and I agree that when you hit a certain level, listen, you know, we all know where, how this game is at this point. Just go delete your account, delete your tweet, and then go delete your yeah. account. I hear you say that to take ownership and be like, I stand in what I said. That is that is actually pretty brave and commendable. So, well, this is the thing, though, too. I'm also not saying horrible things about children. Right. I can oh. stand by what I say because I'm not mean and right. I'm not hateful. You know what right. I mean? And if I and if I have to say something that is harmful to someone, it's usually someone that's a racist or a jerk. Right. So I can stand by that. But if you're out there in the world and you're throwing elbows and it's collateral damage and you're hurting babies, you should apologize and delete your tweets. So come on. There's some people that do need to delete because they're wrong when they said it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Don't be harmful. You can tell the truth without being harmful. Absolutely. And I, well, there, you just said it. You just took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. You're, you're not a mean person. You're mm -mm. Absolutely. And um, sort of switching gears, uh, yeah. I, I see that you're going to be a part of a movie that was a part of my teenagehood. <laughs> Cause, you Is know, it Disenchanted? Age. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you this, you are going to be very delighted. I'm still pinching myself that I got to be a part of this film. I'm pinching myself that I got to go to Ireland for three months to film this film. It is going to be as magical as everyone remembered. Right. Everyone is coming back and we have the addition of Maya Rudolph and Jayma Mays and, and I get to play a part this time and uh, it's it's wonderful. Adam Shankman has created an amazing film and you guys are going to love it. It comes out in November. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, we look forward to that. Uh, I love that movie. So you being a part it's of such a great movie. Our sequel is amazing. Now <laughs> I want to jump into speaking about family and you know mm -hmm. I'm at a place in my life where I'm a young black man trying to mm -hmm. make it entertainment and it's, it can be tough. And mm -hmm. I watched an interview of yours within the past, you know, year where you said that you took a stop, you stopped doing community so you could go and take care of a family member. Mm -hmm. And tell me more about that. Like, how is it that you're so able to have such a great deal of balance with family and career? Because I know many people, almost myself, who would be like, family, listen, let me make it to that point first and then I'll come back for you. So yeah, I guess it all depends on what your what your, what your your priorities are. Mm -hmm. Family is important to me and um, I don't care about fame. I've said it a thousand times. I've never wanted to be famous. It's not something that I, I cultivate or chase. 
Um, I want to make good money doing a job that I love and I'm blessed to do that. But everything else that comes with it is just kind of vapor. It's like a, a mist that you have to walk through. And so when it came down to staying on community or taking care of my dad who has dementia, I chose my dad. And I, you know, I, I haven't, I've never regretted it. You know, I'm sad that I didn't get to be a part of season six of, of the show, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade my dad for anything, you know? So it's important for you to have balance. And, and I think the priorities in this life, in this world, in this industry, for sure, are a little skewed. You know, I, I just, I don't understand it. I, I can't imagine someone choosing fame or money over their family and friends. I don't get it. So I, I, I don't understand. Absolutely. I and I, you know, you know, listening to you is it's always great to get a clear understanding of all of these yeah. things. Now, this yeah. is the topic I want to bring up going back to the view. And I peruse YouTube like crazy for mm -hmm. the last few days trying to find this clip. But in my mind, I pretty sure that it was you, but if it wasn't, please forgive me. Okay. And it was the topic, and I believe you were there was the topic about friends becoming your life partners. Yeah. That was me. I was on there. Oh, yes. Because I, I was <laughs> trying to find a date and I was like, I need to find this clip because I have to bring it up. And it's something that um, resonates with me so much because, yeah. you know, I'm I'm 33. Mm -hmm. um, also a part of the LGBTQ community mm -hmm. for Pride Month. Mm -hmm. but Happy I Pride. Find, thank you. But I find that, you know, I have, I say I've never been in a romantic relationship at all. Oh, uh, honey. Oh, thank you. Sorry for me. Not at all. Oh, no, not snow, but I mean, like, you know, it, it sound, you sounded like you, you you would like that. That's why I said, oh, honey, because it sounded like it was oh. something that you would want. Oh, well, maybe you mm -hmm. sort of, you know, block these emotions off. But what I, I actually love that you stood up for that, because I find that I find the most pleasure in my platonic relationships. Yeah. All my closest friends, I, they intellectually, they stimulate me. Yeah. Uh, they're just so great relationships. And if the only thing we don't do is, you know, we're not physical with one another. Exactly. So, yeah. So, And I don't think we got a chance to really talk it through on The View when we talked about it. Because I think people were saying that you would choose to, to cohabitate with your friend and not have love. Right. I was saying, what I was trying to say is that I was thinking of the Golden Girls model where, you know, when you get older, because I'm getting older now and I'm not married and I don't have kids. So what's wrong with me and a couple of my girlfriends living in a house and taking care of each other and being there to have some coffee or some, some orange juice in the morning to talk about life? And then you can still have your, your little boyfriend on the side and, and have your life on the side. But it's just you have someone to go through life with, because most of us who are still single at the age I am, we have gone through our life with our friends. Right. That's those are the people we call when we have an emergency. Those are the people that we call when when some dude breaks our heart. So what's wrong with cohabitating with someone that's already your friend and who loves you in a platonic way? I didn't I didn't see the problem, but everybody was like, Yvette. And I was like, I don't get what's so bad about it. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, part of that is growing up with a Disney fairy tale. We have to find a prince or a princess. Charlie. Not everybody finds their prince or their princess. And so what does that mean? Then that means you don't have companionship for the rest of your life. It's everything's not about romance. Sometimes it's about just having a buddy to, to, to eat some pizza and watch a TV show with. And you can do that with a platonic friend. I, I, well, I'm so glad that uh, you verified the statement. Thank yeah. you. Because, you, you know, I watch you just about every day. And when you, <laughs> like I said, I love watching you. And when you said that, I was like, thank you. Thank See? you. For that. Because also with that, I also believe, like, listen to the word and define it. Life partner. Mm -hmm. My platonic yeah. friendships, a lot of them have... I've known them for 20 plus years. They That's right. They are your, they are one of your life partners. And I think it's okay right. to call it that. It's not, everything's not about sex. Exactly, exactly. Most of the good things are not, by the way. Right. So, you know, let's remember that. And, and right. but, do we get to holler out Fairfax one more time before I get out of here? Yeah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> It's airing. It's airing on Prime Video right now. There's eight new se new episodes in season two, and you are going to love what the kids go through and 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 uncover and become this season. It's it's really a lot of fun, and I hope people enjoy it. But it is for adults. Fairfax. Absolutely. Yes, viewers, you heard that. Please tune into Fairfax season two on Amazon Prime. Uh, let's talk about um, your civic engagement and your yep. philanthropic efforts. What's going on with that right now? 
I mean, I'm I'm fighting right now to get Karen Bass elected uh, L.A. mayor. I think she's the, the the perfect person. She just came out on top in our primary, and we're just hoping we can get her over the over the finish line in November. And I'm also a board member of Emily's List, so um, it's really oh, we get more time. We get to go to A10. Um, I'm a board member for Emily's List, and so uh, it's an organization that is about finding uh, pro-choice Democratic women and getting them elected. And so we have a lot of people that we're backing in every single election. So I'm still doing that. And you know, listen, Stacey. Abrams and, and, and Raphael Warnock and Val Demings. There are so many people that we need to get across the finish line. Beta O'Rourke. We, we have to turn this tide. We have to get better people in positions of power, not just in the White House, but at even in your state house, in, in attorney general spaces, all of that. We, we see now how important it is for there, in my opinion, to be a Democratic majority because only Democrats seem to care about people. It's just, that's just the way it is. Sorry, I hate to tell you the truth, but that's the truth. How do you stay so engaged? It seems. How do you stay so engaged? Because you work, you work so much. You're so you're so ever present, and yet you still have time to be involved in issues that you know affect you, but also affect mostly other people. So where do you get all this energy from? <laughs> you know, I I want us to have you know clean air and and uh. uh temperature that's not going to burn us up and I don't even have kids but I'm worried about everybody else's kids I want us to be okay and not just me I'm not one of those people that's like well I got mine you get yours I want everybody to be okay and right. so if if I can if I've been given a certain amount of followers I don't even have like a whole bunch of followers but however many I have I'm gonna make sure I tell them to please go register and to vote and tell your friends to go register and vote I'm gonna tell them about the candidates that I love that I think are amazing like these are the things that are important if you have a platform you're supposed to use it for good it can't just be about lip gloss and 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 way shapers you got to find a way to talk about stuff that actually matters that that affects people and so uh, till i take my last breath i will be fighting the good fight i'm gonna go down fighting i'm gonna go by go down swinging and throwing elbows so that we all can have what we need to survive life is tough absolutely but i want to rewind and go, let's go back to fairfax let's go back to fairfax yes let's go back to fairfax so voice acting and what is that process like how do you know what you want to channel into your character and how much it like it creative control do you have over it just let me know all of that you know it all depends on when informing a character it all depends on what what the lines are first right they tell you you know this character is in my case with Trini on Fairfax she's a she's a, a, a stepmom to a, a 12 year old 14 year old boy and, um, you know, she was a, a, she used to sing for Prince. She was a background singer for Prince. So these are little tidbits they give you when you're auditioning. And so then you take that information and you take the lines and you try to craft who you think this person would be in the audition process. If you do well, you might get a call back or you might just book the job. And then when you get in the, in the booth to do the recording, the director of the session says, well, you know, you did it. You, you had her voice a little high. We think Trini might live more in the lower register. Can you take her down a bit? Or, you know, she's speaking really slow. We think Trini speaks a little faster. So in the moment, in the booth, in the moment, you guys work together to craft exactly who that person is. Now, this is the trick about voiceover, though. You might record Trini. I might record Trini. Then I'll go and do three or four other roles on other shows where I might be playing a dog or a squirrel or mama rabbit. And then I come back and it's like, okay, now you're Trini. And you're like, well, what is, how, do, how did Trini sound again? And then somebody will play you reference of the last time you voiced it. And then you go, okay, I remember I'm back. And then you got to get yourself back in the headspace of who that woman or that rabbit or that squirrel is. And so that's part of the, the journey, but it's always an adventure and you get to create wonderful things and then they draw it and you see it and you go oh i'm wearing a pink shirt that's lovely oh, that's what my hair looks like like it's 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 really fun it's my favorite type of acting great 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 so i'm gonna go out and make an assumption because based on what dale looks like and what Trini <laughs> looks like is she his stepmother stepmother yes she's a stepmother so my question to you is how do you feel like you would be as a stepmother oh i think i'd be a cool stepmother mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, because I, first of all, I love, I love people, but, but so, you know, I love kids and I just think I would be fun. I think I would be the cool stepmom, not, not cool. Like here's, here's a beer. Cool. But cool. Like, you know, if you're really going through something and somebody's broken your heart, I think I'm a good listener. And I think I'd be able to sit with the baby and go, well, you know, don't worry about John. John, it, I didn't like the cut of his jib anyway. John, it, you can do better than John. Right. You know, I think I would be that kind of stepmom. Um, and I, I think we'd have a lot of fun if I had, if I had a stepkid. Absolutely. But before I let you go, what else is in store for you? Oh, gosh. Well, I have season two of Big Shot with the fabulous John Stamos. We, we will be 
uh, premiering or debuting second season on Disney Plus sometime this year. And then we already talked about Disenchanted, which is just amazing. And then I'm just going to keep promoting a mess out of Fairfax season two. I'm so excited that we we got another season and that um, Prime Video is, is airing us and that people love us like we we're getting a lot of traction like they love our silliness, which I think is is really great. So I'm excited to, you know, get to work more with these fabulous people. Absolutely. Well, Yvette Nicole Brown, thank you so much. You've been an absolute Thank you. Pleasure. This you was bring, fun. Yes. Oh, thank you. You bring the energy just like you do on every other platform that you thank are a you. part of. You're such, I'm just going to drown you in pleasantries right now. But yes, <laughs> thank you so much. I hope you have an amazing day. You too, hon.